Today, I'm going to talk about suppressors and accuracy and bullet stability. So here's the deal. When we make um, barrel threading anything, there's a tolerance. Okay, We're going to dial things in the best that we can. When gunsmiths are doing their work, they're getting down to two ten thousandths of an inch when they're doing their chamber work. Now, whenever, whenever they thread the muzzle, um, a lot of times you're just putting a brake on. So uh, you're not, a lot of the guys are going to be, um, they're going to think like, well, I don't need to put that much accuracy in it. It could be five ten thousandths that that gunsmith chooses. It could be a thousandths, which is still stinking accurate. Even two thousandths in most, uh, most machining worlds is going to be accurate. And to be honest with you, like if a gunsmith can do that and you can shoot tiny, tiny groups and the rifle platform uh, performs, that is showing that, um, that that data point, that is significant, that it's okay, right? Now, the problem comes in to is if it doesn't, okay? Then you have to tighten things up, and that's, uh, that's where gunsmiths learn, um, and everybody learns. Well, here's the deal. You have different products, okay? What if, what if a product, have, have you consider that, what if a product already took this into consideration in their design? They considered all gunsmiths and all capabilities uh, throughout the country. And can they make their design robust enough to handle that variation? That's what we do at Crow. Okay? And here's how we were able to um, approach this discussion, this topic, and how our technology works and how we get sound decibel reductions with shooting the same exact place and not affecting accuracy like other suppressors do. So it's inherent into the design and how they approach the problem. So here's the deal. We got a barrel. That barrel has a bore down it. And we thread that to the bore. Now there's even uh, discussions and topics about how do you indicate that? You know, are you indicating it off, um, you know, just the, the chamber on the back? The, the curb, there is a curvature to the bore. Okay, do you do it right there? Do you do it right here? You know, are you indicating with your indicating rod here? Or are you indicating with your indica indicator rod there? Because they're gonna be different places because that bore moves, okay? So some guys will actually dial this in to where the last couple of inches is perfectly straight. Other guys will dial this end in and dial the back end of the barrel over here end, right? With the curvature of the bore over this, uh, over the center, okay? So there's um, rifles that have been done both ways that shoot lights out, okay? These are theoretical discussions that, well, could affect what the suppressor does, okay? And you couple, you put on different manufacturers who have different ways of thinking, ideologies, and it behaves completely different versus the different ideologies of the gunsmiths and how the, how the uh, suppressors are built. So this tolerance is then married up with a tolerance of the threading of the brake or the suppressor mount, okay? Then the suppressor mount has a tolerance of how it attaches the su suppressor to. So as, if you're talking about dead center, you got your first tolerance, this is gonna have a tolerance angle there. You got the next one that has a wider because the tolerances are adding to one another and you have a wider angle here. Now, by the time the can and the bullet, the bullet goes out the can over here, okay? It is seeing a wider tolerance angle of those machine features the farther it goes because it's like a lever, okay? And the, the angle is farther, the farther out you go, okay? Here it's very small. Now, here's where the problem comes in. You have the bullet traveling down the center of the suppressor. That's what we hope for anyway. The problem is, is because of all the machining and all the multiple parties that are involved, the bullet does not travel down the center of the suppressor. It's impossible, okay? So as the bullet, if we have the bullet traveling on this side a little bit closer, over here, down the center line of the suppressor, then what's going to happen is, is the air over here, there's a wider gap over here. The air is going to rush out of the way, okay? 
on this side much faster than over here. And when that happens, you're creating the definition of an aircraft wing. Air travels slower on the bottom side of the aircraft wing, and whenever it travels faster, that's the reason why it's curved on the top, is because the air is traveling over here all at the same speed. Well, to get around and over this thing, it has to travel faster over the top because it's got a farther distance to go, okay? You create lift on the bottom, okay? So what happens is, is you create lift on this side of the bullet, here. Now, what are we always trying to achieve when we are doing suppressors? We are trying to achieve the quietest suppressor on the market. How do you do that? You take the borehole size, that's why they have end caps that are always a smaller. Well, you're only doing that end cap on the very exit. You're not doing that, that same, you're not changing the whole diameter of the, uh, for each baffle, okay? And they see that it gets quieter because they put a, a, a smaller end cap on the back, on the end, right? Well, they're trying to get that borehole size smaller and smaller and smaller without having too much effect on accuracy, okay? So as they get these boreholes smaller, what's happening to the accuracy of the can? It's reducing, it's going down because it's impossible to make it, okay? It's impossible to make it on center and the air is now rushing faster and faster off one side. What that is going to do, let's see here, is going to take this boat tail hollow point or whatever, whatever bullet you have here, okay? And it's gonna create and put a force on, si on the side of this bullet, which is going to then destabilize that bullet. What happens, what we see, extremely long range shooting, is you're not gonna see this at 100 yards. You're not gonna see this at 200 yards, even 300 yards, it's debatable. The bullet comes out, even if it's, un if, even if it's unstable, has a, a force applied to it, it weather veins out. The air traveling across it weather veins that, that bullet out and it, gets, it becomes more stable again, okay? The problem is when it starts slowing back down. Going at longer range, that bullet is going to slow back down. When the bullet starts slowing back down and the rotational forces of that bullet start slowing back down, that inherent yaw that was put in at the beginning comes back to the bullet. Okay, which then after things start slowing down, opens up your group sizes. Okay, on your targets, you're going to have less impacts at distance at long range whenever you have bullets that don't travel down the center line. Okay. Now, the way we solve that one is with our conical mounts and the way we machine these things, okay, from the, this threading to this threading and the conical mount is all machined in the same process. That's important because every time you change a process and you have to reset up, that's where the inaccuracies come from. Okay. So we're going to keep that to a minimum. The other thing is, is that our borehole sizes are some of the largest in the industry because our technology is not as dependent on the size of the bore we're making those tornadoes so whenever you have a baffle system here okay and the the uh the technology is is that you're using our tornado to do it the hole could be larger in size versus smaller in size and it wants to stay in the tornado okay we're not as dependent it still has a factor a saxon 9 versus a saxon yes it's louder right but that nine millimeter borehole size versus another pistol can um that has that nine millimeter borehole borehole size on a 338 lapua magnum or a normal magnum is significantly quieter okay than than say other traditional baffle systems. That's where the inaccuracy, the instability comes from. One is the machining processes on how it's made, the multiple hands that are touching it, putting this, uh, making all of this happen. But our cans are designed to, uh, to accommodate for all that because 
when other people can only deviate by one or two percent off a of center line, we can deviate 15, 20 percent off a of center line and it never affects accuracy. That's that's huge. That's very important. That's one of the reasons why our cans shoot the same place every single time. So if you have any questions, leave them on the comments below. Contact customer service at uh, crowsuppressors.com and we'll get you all taken care of. Uh, but I guarantee you, this is going to be your favorite suppressor that you own. So get yours today. There's a lot more behind our suppressors that's working to give you that experience that we're here to give you. Okay? Let's leave the legacy with you and your family. Let's have some great times, some great experiences, and, uh, and get this done. So contact us today, get yours, and uh, we'll take care of you. Got any questions? Let us know.